in this one in this lecture we will look at what is thread so last class we saw what are processes so process is there for executing an application and threads we saw with one example of a web server that even in one application you want parallelism okay so you want concurrency so for example there was a web server and lot of requests are coming parallelly to it and if there is only one single execution okay so one person to execute this code what will happen is let's say each of the request takes 2 second to be completed so when a request comes okay and they are coming at a uh, inter arrival time of 0.1 second or in fact 1 second itself so now what happens when he takes this request now he will have 2 seconds to complete it and by that time after 1 second another request will come which has to wait for 1 second then he will complete so it will be basically the delay will increase so that's why in one process itself we need multiple threads okay for processing parallelly so this is thread so what does a thread need so state shared by all threads so in a process all the address space so if it spawns multiple threads so the address space is shared so the content of the memory like the global memory the heap memory so they are all shared okay so you have the memory basically it is shared if you have some global variables all the threads can change that and then that's why you need to be very particular about using global variables with multiple threads then your heap whatever you do on memory m um, alloc or that things you do all are shared by the different threads so if you spawn threads four threads t1 t2 t3 t4 they all will be in one process p1 they will be sharing the global variables and they can change it input output state like file system network connections etc they all share so now the thing is state private now what is private to each thread then so what is private is that they can execute they of course will have different code so kept so that is kept in like process control block the private things for a thread is put in thread control block so like what so cpu so each thread will also be executing parallelly so their cpu registers program counter stack counter they will be different like one thread will be executing some different code than other thread so which line it is executing what is the stack pointer and so on these are different execution stack is also different so whatever it is executing like what functions it is calling so they are all private for each thread and that should not be other thread should not access them or violate them so this is their execution stack so basically what will come there so you have in execution stack parameters if i'm calling some function what are the parameters i have passed temporary variables that are there so all these things should be private to each thread so and the program counters are also so they are specific to each of the thread so now let's take one example so here is again one function example so the stack how the stack grows it grows downwards so initially it passes a function stack pointer tells that a is the present function and the temporary value is 1 return is the address okay now what happens if temp is less than 2 so value is so it calls b so now in the stack we push one more that okay now i am in function b return address is y so this is the place where i should return after that function is done from b it calls c so again something is pushed into this stack for the particular thread now address u is there where it should return a2 it calls again it goes to a and then address v is the return pointer okay now it is less than a2 a is called so it will print temp 
now it returns back okay so it returns to from where it was called so c from c it goes to b because this was from where it returned now a is also popped so output is 2 and 1 so this is the so single thread example so this is what it should be separate for each thread in a process so for example if we take this example pi if you need to compute pi there is a function so i know that it is a recurring decimal so non recurring decimal pi irrational number so it will continuously you will generate numbers so it's kind of infinite function print class list so this is something finite you can print but if you call these two functions one infinite function along with other finite function key it this function will never be called because your execution is stuck here so now what happens but if you use two threads so what will happen what i will the main thread it will say that please start this function so he will give one person he will be stuck in the infinite loop but the print class list another function thread t2 will have the print class list and he will execute and complete it so now both of them will have their work so compute pi will never finish program would never print the class list if it was one thread but if we create thread then compute pi will be done parallelly with the create thread print class list so start independent thread running given procedure so this is there so what happens now even if you have one cpu both of these threads will share the timing okay so this is there now what is the memory footprint of two threads so what they have in the memory so if we stop this program and examine in a debugger so what we will see we will see two cpu registers we will see two set of stacks so they will all have their functions so one thread whatever function it is executing that can call other functions which in turn can call other functions so two set of stacks will be there so one for thread 1 one for thread 2 both of them will be going downward in the address space then you have how do we position stacks relative to each other so one question is i know that for each process you have limited amount of memory so now if i'm saying stack 1 is starting 2 is starting here stack 1 is starting here there is limited space in between so how to decide how much space i should give to stack 1 then to stack 2 because heap is increasing here so what how to decide and what happens if uh, let's say a function is there in stack 1 i call f1 and then i call f2 okay and inside that in fact i call f1 again so this will in this stack wall what will happen f1 again f1 will be pushed again f1 again f1 infinitely so it will just overwrite all these things in the stack okay so that way there will be a crash so how to decide this how to guard this and so on what maximum size should be size should be for the stack what happens if some thread violates this so how will you catch this violation so these are some questions so some some way your run run time you should stop the thread from doing that so per thread state each thread should have their thread control block execution state it should have your cpu registers program counter what line i'm executing because when a thread there is a context change in thread also if cpu is executing different thread so it should know which line i was executing for this previous one now what i have to execute stack pointer and then it should have the scheduling info what is the priority of this thread is it high then i should take longer time give it longer cpu time and then i should also know various pointers for implementing scheduling that okay now which for scheduling also i should know like which queue this thread is in pointer to the process control block which process i belong to and lot of stuff so each of this is maintained in the thread control block and now you can know that each process control block so if a process has lot of threads so it will have an link list of the threads also and the thread control block so i hope till here it's enough for this thread
the starting point of thread and the scheduling and the thread control block so i hope you understand this thanks a lot